A new book that was just published is examining the media's part in reporting COVID-19's death toll in America. Joining us to talk about the book called The Price of Panic, How the Tyranny of Experts Turned a Pandemic into a Catastrophe, is one of the book's three authors, William Briggs. Good morning, William. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So you and two of your co-authors are our professors taking a look at the price of panic and you and you pose a number of questions uh, like, you know, what what is the cost to the the economy? How did politicians who know nothing of science decide whom to trust? You pose a lot of these questions. What does your book say in regards to the answers to those questions? Well, largely, as the title says, we panicked uh, when we could have done things uh, soberly and cautiously. And with regard to the evidence, we panicked. Uh, right now, we're starting to panic again. Uh, every fall, of course, as you know, we head into the cold and flu season. We enter self-isolated uh, lockdowns, if you like, and help spread diseases around. And yet this was the very thing uh, a lot of governments decided that would help stop this virus uh, was to enter into these lockdowns. And of course, uh, it, it didn't have any effect on the spread of the virus, but it did cause a lot of damage, not only to the economy. The economy is not, so, it's just dollars and cents, right? Who cares? But the economy is jobs. The economy is how people put food on the table. The economy is livelihoods. And that really hurt a lot of people. Not only that, uh, lockdowns uh, definitely were responsible for a lot of extra deaths. Uh, suicides were up. A lot of people uh, did not go to the hospital to get their cancer checks, other sort of checks that they uh, put off because the hospitals were flatly turning them away, uh, waiting for these waves of bodies that uh, frankly never really showed up. There was a little bit too much reliance on very iffy models uh, that were put out. And at the beginning, we're forecasting numbers of deaths much larger than the worst pandemic we have known in our lifetimes, which are in, in the past century, which is the right. Spanish flu. Right. And and some skeptics might say, but look, you're not a virologist, nor are the other two authors, and, and maybe our actions prevented those larger numbers that were initially forecast, and maybe the actions that we're taking prevented a lot of deaths. To that, you say what? Well, I say they're wrong. Uh, we did a country by country and state by state analysis. We looked at a whole range of countries that had lockdowns and uh, those that did. Japan, for you, everybody hears about Sweden. Sweden did much better than England, for instance, or Belgium. Uh, and these countries had famously had lockdowns. England is heading back into another lockdown. But Japan did much better than any of them. They, uh, Japan has a much larger population and a death rate a tenth of what, uh, of what these other countries did. And they did not lock down. Many countries did, lock, did not lock down and did fine. Eight states in America did not lock down, and they had the best um, among the death rates, South Dakota, North Dakota, uh, Montana, Arkansas, and others. So lockdowns, uh, in, in some cases, actively killed. In New York, uh, Governor Cuomo's policy was to cram sick people in, in fear of the hospitals becoming overcrowded. He crammed the people with the virus into nursing homes, and that spread like wildfire there among the most vulnerable population, leading to many extra deaths. So uh, lockdowns did more harm than they did good, if they did any good whatsoever. And there's clearly no real evidence for them. Well, I'm sure people can, can find your book on Amazon, I would imagine. Yes, they can, anywhere. All right. Uh, William Briggs, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate it. Asking a lot of important questions, um, hopefully, which we can learn from. Should we have to do this again? Unfortunately, hopefully not. But thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Lauren. Absolutely. Well, the